and welcome back once more ladies and gentlemen we just had our semi-finals match and now we are having a quarter-finals match because well due to several time constraints but yeah we have in green Karatel, uh the well the contester so to say in the south of the map he actually let me just uh check up to be sure yes he won against uh Eistinger and markov previously so he's the most experienced what this uh what concerns this tournament and then we have on the other side kriukov uh, the player in red over here um who well qualified highest in his group and therefore is immediately there in the quarterfinals so pioneer pass we already had this match uh two times one it was an eighth final match against yi and then it was a uh, final semi-final match uh, so technically um if it is uploaded later on on youtube you don't know how the semi-final is going to finish because it was already uploaded so i will try to do my best not to spoil anything on who will have won the semi-final match on the other side and even who was qualified but the thing to say is that uh, the last time it was played it was an eighth final match of uh, Yi um, against his opponent uh, against whom he won by the way so if you didn't check out this match you can and on pioneer pass what he did and what happened another time uh, on this map as well is that the player one of them always put his base around this advanced crystal on basically the halfway point of the match of the map put already a, um, his base basically well up here um, because there's one good reason for this those spawns those are custom made uh, so this means that this map if you play it uh, single player multiplayer whatsoever oh, actually kind of nice from below uh, if you play it single player multiplayer whatsoever you will only find this spawn and this other spawn on the other side you will not be able to spawn where they spawned and this is because this is the special workshop uh, for player version which i created for this tournament adding two more spawns and i'm receiving a message here he cannot hear me on stream okay this seems to be an issue um okay um i received a message that someone cannot hear me on the stream but i'm seeing very well that my sound has an output and that um yeah we are live okay um actually it might be it might just be a confusion i just wrote in the chat so if you hear me technically all right there should be no issue i'm sorry for the delay okay and the problem has solved itself i think this is good now okay now i have confirmation people can hear me everything is good everything is all right so okay sorry everyone this is a terribly rookie mistake i just received a message that people cannot hear me so i wanted to check this out uh, to be sure that the rest of the tournament goes on all right so we have kriukov who is in red he already has uh, four eight lances one minute and one minute non aggro left he has eight lances but no helmets right now so he is going to need more resources and on the other side we have an archer rush which is the first time we're going to see this in this tournament and i'm very hyped for it because i'm always all for the archer rush we see that there are already two archer kits a third one being made right now and but only one halberdier's lance uh, and the helmets are being produced right now so what i was going to say is the problem with this map is if you play this configuration there are basically no re no resources nearby and this is kind of wanted because first of all it forces the player in an uncomfortable situation where basically you have to go out somewhere to find the resources so it really makes you want to go outside and i'll grow it makes you want to go outside of your base it makes you want to explore the map basically 
um, and as many players did, put your base forward um, and also make you take, let's say, the more risky approach. The thing is, the thing is, with this, you also have a quick access here because, for example, you can make a bridge here or here and just go around half of the map and immediately go to your opponent's position. So now, uh, green having two archer kits and no halberdier kits, uh, one being made right now. And meanwhile, red having one conquering ward, so putting down the first one, and four lances, but no helmets, crucially no helmets, but one conquering ward. So, yeah, very, very different start than what we had before, because what we had before is, well, one of the guys was here in advance, or on the other side, and then they were just able to either rush the opponent with a big-ass halberdier rush, um, but yeah, this is not happening over here, so it seems that both players are a bit more defensive. Um, no helmets ready whatsoever right now, although we are almost... Uh, yeah, well, the, the non-aggression phase is over, so I'm going to be honest. Who is going to be the first one to explore the enemy's base and be like, wait a second. He has basically nothing to attack me, I can just rush him. And most importantly, I find it incredibly funny that no player has a hat for the halberdier and that, well, if it gets to a rush, only two archer kits are what the most defensive position has to offer. So incredible stuff, two sentinels added now, but now finally the halberdier hats have been had, have been added to the, to the people, to the, to the kits and uh, yeah, red making a very quick impression, Kriukov, with uh, three, two crystals being conquered and one halberdier being sent out to scout the map. And yeah, we can see the main feature of this map. It's the S's. We go left, right, left. And if you have one worker who just chops some trees down, you can get a quick access route. And now in response, we can see that Caratel is having one archer, which might actually be a great reaction because if he stops before the Revan, he might totally be able to... Um, oh, actually, he's running over there, but he's being pursued by the by the Halberdier. So will he die? Because this is basically a death trap in which he's right now. So he noticed that there's, an, that there's the Halberdier. Technically, if he gets pursued, he could just drop off. But now, as he starts shooting, the halberdier decides to rush to the attack and even stops. We are not seeing the health bar right now, so very curious. But he has four arrows. He should be not very full on health. And now he jumped down and he will probably be trying to run back to his base. But now the halberdier said, you know what? I'm not going to jump down as well. There's a second halberdier coming and he's running back the other way around. Is he, is he trying to get to his base and just ignoring the archer? This seems crazy, but now they are, watch out, there are two workers coming. Kriukov has two workers on the way with the conquering ward. This might prove disastrous. Okay, but now the, archers is, the archer is running back, the Halbadiers did their job. They are sandwiching the archer, but now the archer, well, they have the same speed. The thing is, they are probably not going to be able to yeah, do one more attack. They did like this one, but now the distance is too big. And... Most importantly, now Caratel is having four archer kits and a total of three halberdiers kits with one more, um, well, three more lances, but no hats. So uh, there's that. Now, Kriukov putting down another conquering ward over here. So he really took all of the, the half of the map. The problem is, as said, his opponent could just build a bridge here and destroy it. And this would be it with this conquering ward that is. So now, Caratel in pursuit, three Halberdiers versus two. Um, but, 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 no reinforcements nearby, so they are probably going to run the big way. The problem is, if they run back to the base, they will be losing this Conquering Ward, and this is precious. You don't want to lose that, but there we go. There it is, there it's gone. And the problem is, he might just run over here, actually, and destroy this one too, or go over here, go over here. Well, he basically can just destroy the whole map, and actually he does both of them, sending for each of them one Halberdier out. So this is going to be an incredibly costly loss. But right now, Caratel says, actually, I'm going for all of your conquering wards. I'm going for this one over here, 
I'm going for this one over there, it's already dead, and I'm going for the third one. And now Kriukov is just pursuing with four halberdiers, uh, the three halberdiers who are, came in and destroyed all of the wards. What an incredible quick turn of events. The problem is, will he maybe try to get the kill? It doesn't seem like he's going to get the kill. He's going to leave not even one worker there to keep it up. And a fifth halberdier is also there now. Alright, so now finally everyone has their kits and there's even... There are even two kits left on uh, Kriukov's side. And uh, yeah. Aratel is uh, running running back with this halberdier. Another one there joining back the two others in the center of the map. Meanwhile, he didn't conquer much on his side. He just has the one crystal, the same as his opponent, and even the, the sentinels to defend it next to it. So this is pretty much a safe safe position and yeah Caratel having four archer kits and two more halberdier kits so in total six halberdier kits enough for 10 people and now we can see Kriukov with five halberdiers pursuing his opponents and he has two more lances in his base but two halberdiers are also coming back so in total we are having seven halberdier kits it looks like and now they're just pursuing them back to the base the problem is he's going to meet the few sentinels and this is probably going to be a rough battle especially since there are five there might even be six uh halberdiers so yeah and we see that actually Karatel pulled back his conquering ward so made sure that uh, this was not gonna stay out of there out there and now the other halberdiers joined the offensive force and now it's going to be a six versus six fight out in the desert and let's just zoom in to see if there's one, someone has a disadvantage, it doesn't look like it. One is running back, he must be low on health. But now one of the red one is getting targeted. The red one is running back, but nothing happened there. No death so far, so incredible micromanagement from both players. The question is... Okay, so now they came back. Oh, actually, he died. One of them died. My bad, I didn't notice it. It was outside of the screen, I think. Uh, but now... Yeah, they're fighting over here. The one archer is giving support for Halberdiers. One is down. Caratel lost one of his. Krukov almost lost one of his, but now actually lost one. And now incredible fourth and back. So five Halberdiers against five Halberdiers. And uh, yeah, the, the traces of a former warrior. And actually now three people died in total. And uh, yeah, Krukov lost the first one in this battle. But then uh, yeah, both of them lost uh, fighters and most importantly kids. Now we can see actually that there's one halberdier of Karatel who is basically in front of the rest and might even be targeted by uh, Kriukov now. But yeah, five against five, they're all running back to the base it seems. The thing is, Kriukov in his base has only one halberdier but he has no sentinels. He has a healing ward so this is gonna help somewhat but that's it. There is no... Uh, nothing else and now he's targeting the one worker staying back so is this gonna be oh he's very low on health and now i think he's going to be dead because then it's going to come the animation and he has no time to jump will he get it oh he's still alive wonderful and actually one of them didn't make the jump and the other one who did the jump is still alive and now the other one is almost dead and he's dead and actually character lost another halberdier yeah, meanwhile the one from kirukov who had two pursuers behind him did manage to get away this was incredible an incredible scene to be honest and now um everyone is just happy to let the opposing side run back Karatel with his three halberdiers is running back and krukov is actually going to take the middle once again and now let's just check on the people there's one two two workers in the base of Karatel. three halberdiers are coming back no actually only two halberdiers Two halberdiers are coming back and yeah he really lost many people right there and so now there are four halberdiers on their way and the two workers who were there before are now joining the fight so there's four halberdiers against five incoming the thing is he still has the advantage Caratel still has the sentinels over here so and now he's going to let the two um well low hp uh halberdiers go back to the base and now they're just going to stay there and i think this might actually be the best strategy he has just making sure that his opponent his his opponent cannot get out of his base 
and uh, making sure to besieging him because right now he has no resources whatsoever so if he gets besieged he's going to be in the worst situation ever he's trying to destroy the center uh, the conquering ward and actually he did he's trying to get away but this one will probably die and he's dead yes he lost one halberdier in the process but still got one of his opponent uh help um, he got the conquering ward the thing is now he's going to come back carrot hell with an archer trying to finish off the one he did before but now everyone puts down the kit they think it's over but no there come five halberdiers again okay so status right now five halberdier five rare halberdiers of kriukov are in the middle of the map three are going back two are staying there the thing is right now Caratel four archers he says you know what i don't care about halberdiers i'm gonna leave my three kids in the base and come out with four archers the thing is archers are good as long as they have numerical advantage and right now as long as there are four guys against two they are always going to win because you can only fight one on one in melee uh, so there's always going to be two guys who will be able to shoot so as long as you call back the three other guys right there to start shooting on them this is going to be uh yeah, there we have it. They are just running back and even there, they are running back over there. So right now, Kriukov seems to be pushed back to his base, literally back to his roots. Uh, so yeah. What is going... Okay. And now actually, Karatel used the advantage of this map and put archers up here, making sure that his opponent cannot either build a bridge over here or cross the, this valley down below. So, very interesting sort of strategy. Um, I talked about it much in the past, but no player ever did it, so I'm very glad to see that someone did, does it. Also, it, the only disadvantage of this one is that there's still the whole other side of the map who is like, well, open, so to say. So if, for example, Kriukov can send one scout over here and maybe, maybe build a bridge over here, he would be literally inside his opponent's space and just be able to, well, destroy the crystal and call it a day. But yeah, <laughs> opposing the two archers over there, actually, Krukov sent one halber uh, one Bricktron down here and he's... Why is he gathering grass? I'm not sure, but he's just chilling around here and maybe starting to build... Oh, is he building a passage? Very interesting. Actually, this should be seen by the other guys from Caratel, but very interesting strategy. Will he maybe try to dig himself in or... No, he just did this and is going to the very interesting, very odd choice as well. I'm very curious to see. Okay, so the strategy here is you have one guy with already something on the back, so then he cannot pick up the dirt and just keep on digging infinity. The question is, what is he going to dig? Because right now, okay, let's just check the map. Where are we at? Okay, so Kriukov is going for the brimstone and probably the iron ore over here. Um, having only only five halberdier kits in total, so he's going to miss a few, and also needing, going to need a few more stuff. Also, his opponent Caratel has two archers over here, assuring him map control over the middle. The problem is it's only a partial middle because, as we saw, one worker. From Krukov was, ju was just able to go over here, drop, and then be here in the middle. And now Karatel noticed him and sent one halberdier to when he comes out. The question is, if we put on the x-ray, let's make sure. What did he actually do? He seems to be digging a tunnel. Okay. This is incredible because he must be ordering all of this in the not in the first person but like ordering his guy directly which must be incredibly time consuming and to be honest if i would be caratel i would just try to make sure that uh to make sure that uh yeah to attack him while he does this because then the worker will have to come out and well just die because he made a one way um yeah there we can better see it what so he just made it so that he will have to jump so he could just destroy this one but yeah i'm i'm really not sh not sure what he's trying to do if you are in the chat maybe what do you think he's trying to do is he trying to make a tunnel or is he just trying to because i don't see the point of this to be honest 
because where will he be going? He's just wasting the time and the resources of one of his workers. Maybe he has an idea. Maybe he has a plan. But I am not so sure about it. Okay, we see one worker carrying a brick. Will he try to actually close this guy in? This would be hilarious, I'm going to be honest. If he would just say, okay, you know what? You're doing your stuff. I'm just going to put a brick down here and say bye-bye. Uh, I'm just going to, clo to close this, this tomb. But uh, yeah. Actually, it doesn't seem like it, because right now Caratel is ordering his two archers back from the middle of the map. Okay, very interesting, because he could have also put them over here and just tell uh, tell them to shoot on any Brickchon in the base, forcing his opponent to either put down a wall over here or something else. But, uh, yeah, very interesting. Uh, and now we can see that, yeah, Caratel is just building another conquering tower, as we saw many times before in this tournament. Just build a tower here, put your Conquering Ward on top, and it makes it harder to get destroyed by your opponent. Uh, mainly because it doesn't have only 4 hit points. So, back on the tunnel. Okay, so we seem to be advancing really much. But let's just pursue this direction. What will, Where will he come out? He will come out actually over here. So, is the idea to just cross over to the base? But why? Okay, you would avoid... The sentinels but despite that doesn't it seems seem to be rather a risk than an advantage there we are very intriguing very intriguing even though he put too it too deep so the other guys can just jump down and get there although they could just destroy this brick and then uh, they would be there but very interesting strategy or choice of uh, yeah choice just very interesting choice overall bit confused but now we see Kriukov who is what is he doing what is the goal here and also why are all his people coming because I think the problem is he pulled them somewhere to put down wood well the last one is going to be putting it down the thing is now three of his workers are basically exposed and being pursued by Karatel's uh, halberdier so it seemed to have worked, so where did he put it down? Not? Hmm. I'm still intrigued by what he's doing, but let's uh, focus on the rest of the match. Uh, so, Kriukov's worker is running around the map. Meanwhile, Karatel put down his Conquering Ward and his Sentinels, so making sure that everything is well protected. I think that he just, Kriukov just ordered one of his workers uh, to go destroy it, the problem is there's a sentinel, so he's going to be in a lot of trouble shortly. The thing is, is he going to destroy it first or later? Because right now, the worker will probably die, but so did the sentinel and and the conquering ward died. So this is a huge ad advantage for Kriukov right now. And as long as he doesn't have an archer, he's probably not able to pursue him. And now there are three more halberdiers and two workers in hot pursuit. Of his opponent and Kriukov is still digging something in the ground. We have no idea what it is or why he does build this strange tunnel, but well, who knows? Okay, so right now Kriukov has four archer kit in the base, none in youth in use. And as before. Yeah. Two sentinels to defend his base. And uh Oh, actually, fun thing. It seems that we found a player who doesn't like the um, the normal tower, who just puts down some some uh, wood and puts the conquering ward on top, which is, I must say, also a nice alternative to see in this tournament. So now in the middle of the map, Karatel is clearly on the offensive, or well, the counter offensive, I would say, with four halberdiers pursuing three other halberdiers. Um, the thing is, overall. Yeah, not much is happening for one simple reason. Yeah, okay, so now... Uh, now Karatel ordered his guy to destroy the wood over here. It seems to destroy, to attack, to destroy the conquering ward. The thing is, he's just going to ignore all the workers on the way. And actually... Yeah, actually, I thought they were going to defend it. The thing is, now they are going for this other one. And they are just going to attack him 
forcing him to drop it, but he doesn't drop it. No, he's just running around with his conquering ward. And now it's turning out in a good old brawl. The tower has been destroyed. And now the other conquering ward is down as well. Now again, Caratel versus Krukov. A big old fight in the desert. A three against three. Actually four against three. But one of them is low on health, so he's already running back. And now three against one. He's trying to secure the kill. The thing is, if he doesn't get the kill, he will just try to get the conquering ward. So, and what is he doing there? He seems to be building another kind of... Uh, Tunnel again. The thing is, or is he going? No, he's going for the resources. It seems. No, it's just stone. Never mind. But now he's going for the for the for the ore for the brimstone. So it seems to be a dire resource situation, making him dig the mountain right there. Uh, but yeah. Meanwhile, one of the workers left exposed, and this worker is going to die to Caratel. And yeah, this is just turning out into a big old brawl. And actually, he can focus any of them because both of them are half HP, so they are going to be easy kills. Okay, and now they seem to be pursuing him into the base, so Caratel in the base. The problem is, there are many um, sentinels in the base. He's just trying to finish him off. And actually, there are many dead angles in his base, stopping the sentinels from shooting. You can see them activating and deactivating all of the time. But now it seems like a few halberdiers will die. So I'm trying to get an overview of all of this. But actually, a very neat positioning of the of the um, the sentinel in the in the mountain. But actually, yeah, I think one of the halberdiers here died. So this is, uh, yeah, one of the souls returning to uh, Caratel's crystal. And uh, yeah, here we have still on Caratel's side. So again, putting down or leaving there one guy to make sure that this is conquered. And Kriukov still making his weirdly shaped tunnel. Going down here, going down there, going down there. And then going down here again. I really really not sure where he's trying to get at is he trying to go to the crystal or is he i don't know where he would be going with this especially since it seems to be taking an awfully long and uh dreadful time just to plan this out so uh yeah well but anyways so caratel having secured his site again Coming with another conquering ward soon. There we go. And uh, having two halberdiers in the middle, two halberdiers in the middle, securing the map, and now pushing them, pushing them again to take map control. The thing is that Kriukov is sending two workers out, so I'm really not sure what the plan is here. But uh, yeah, nothing those uh, halberdiers cannot handle. But yeah, forcing them at least to return home. And now uh, Krukov making sure that, yeah, he's securing the passage. So very interesting pla placement of sentinels in the mountain. Although they have a ginormous dead spot, if they want to take the crystal, they will have to come past them, technically. As long as you don't have one guy in this corner. But uh, yeah, very nice strategy seen here. A third halberdier is coming up to the middle. And uh, yeah, the tunnel is still being... Getting another angle now. Very curious to see where this is going to... To be ending up in the end, but... Uh, who knows, who knows. Alright, so the green caratel... I'm just going to check the timer. 15 minutes left almost on the regulation. So I'm just going to be sending them a message shortly. And now another conquering ward is being put out. Uh, this time again by Caratel. And look at the middle here. We have five halberdiers against one worker. Because now Caratel is pushing his advantage and probably trying to intercept anything coming out of the middle here, which I think is the right strategy to do. Just try to limit your opponent 
to the least amount of crystals he might get or even attain. But uh, yeah, okay. Five guys here in the middle. One halberdier seems to be joining them shortly. And now only two workers, two workers left uh, behind the lines. Which makes it so that yeah, right now he has one crystal advantage. There's still one worker below here for some reason doing what whatever. And now there are ooh, seven halberdiers coming out of there. So let's just be clear here. Unless Caratel uses the two remaining or the one remaining worker and his archer kit, this is a losing fight because this mass of halberdiers is just gonna punch a hole. It's just gonna punch a hole in his defenses. Defenses, but they seem to be going back curiously enough. So, hmm, what does he have in mind? What does he have in mind? The thing is, right now, Kukov is losing this fight, and I, the only thing. I can imagine this worker doing is, and he seems to be back at it, is to be going for this crystal, or especially, oh, very nice placement by the way, we can see that this conquering ward is not only up on two stones, but it's also at a dead angle, protected in the passage. Very nice. The thing is, yeah, what is Kriukov? planning here with his worker what 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 does he have in mind where will he come out i don't really see the point of it this is the exact position of his worker what are you even trying to do you're below the ground you're in a big stone block so yeah let's just focus on what's happening over here so we can see that Paratel put all his people up to the wall making sure that the sentinels cannot shoot and so that if he does come out uh, his opponent will have to go by them which is always a huge disadvantage okay so now the conquering ward is also in the corner but yeah as said he only contro controls one crystal at most and if he can leave all of his uh, halberdiers here well i mean he's only going to besiege his opponent and unless he builds a bridge to go over here and conquer this one, this crystal, he's going to win simply by having the most crystals. So, as we are nearing the end of this match, very confusing strategies, I'm going to be honest, but very intriguing ones as well. Now, Kriukov is on the pursuit. He's trying to force the opponent out of the middle. He's having more people in total, but... Uh, a big old melee is gonna ensue. And one of the Halberdiers seems to be left behind and one of them dies. So Karatel lost one of his Halberdiers. Kriukov now having sent out one worker in front. I'm not really sure what's the point of this worker. Will he try to join the first one or will he just try to grab something? Because I think he will just try to destroy this stone block again as he did before and this is why they're all pursuing him but actually i think that three or four halberdiers should be enough the problem is okay he thinks that one of the no one is enough the thing is yes by pursuing them he basically left his base open for the rush uh, which he only has two sentinels which is not enough so now caratel seems to be going back with kriukov in pursuit now Krukov trying to destroy the one stone block as he did before. The two halberdiers attacking him, but again, okay, the worker died this time, so this is at least a good news for him. And now, actually, well, this is just crazy hot pursuit because Caratel, what is he even aiming at? He seems to be aiming at the racks, but now he seems to be going back. This is madness. There's no focused uh, attack in this, so Kriokov is now having to fall back after being shot at heftily by the Sentinels. And now Karatel is just pursuing him. Okay, well, so now Karatel is just 
pursuing him with a lot of hold ideas, even more than he is falling back with. And Krukov still having a lot, he still had lots of kids, so there's no problem there. The thing is, yeah, okay, he's going to let him go over around here. The thing is, they are both now again down on one crystal. So the question is, will Caratel being be able to put down another conquering ward here? Before the match ends, there are 9 minutes and 30 seconds left. Or will he just rush his opponent, try to destroy him or something like this? I'm pretty sure it might even be possible to just order all of his people back here, like around here. Um, just to make sure that the sentinels cannot shoot and then the two sentinels might not be that big an issue in the base because of the many dead spots. Uh, but yeah. Now Kriukov coming back and uh, even... Okay, so his underground worker is getting closer to the surface right now. But yeah, still unsure about what he's going to do in the end, what's the goal of, of this. Uh, but yeah, there's even one lance just lying there in the base. I would put this on the rack to be honest, but uh, you know. Okay, and now Karatel putting down the laboratory. So I think... He knows he will need some big firepower and what do you need what do you get when you need big firepower? Exactly. You need an alchemist. And actually, as I'm saying this, Karatel is also pushing Kriokov back to his base once more, forcing the sentinels to shoot in the dirt. And now it's a good old fight. And he even has to return. And actually there's one worker who came through of Karatel. And this worker will die, but he did his nation a great service. Or did he? Because he's still alive, so technically and now he's going to die by the yep he died by the sentinel two people died but now Caratel having six halberdiers against four of his opponents even though he has more kids in his base this is not an issue but the thing is he lost the conquering ward and without the conquering ward the sentinels are dying too you can see their hit points going down and now they are off so they're not dead they're just off so to say so as long as there's no of the conquering ward they are out of energy and the thing is right now or can they still shoot because i'm pretty sure i saw them go off but uh, i'm not sure there but yeah now we see Caratel against krikov in the open fight Caratel should be winning this and even so he has only his one crystal it's still draw Technically speaking, because I'm considering that he's going to put another conquering ward down there quickly before the seven minutes end. So technically, but yeah, it's a big old mess because there are people from everyone, everywhere in this mix. And there's even one worker pursuing the, the whole lot. And now, can we just see what the... No, okay, so Kriokov has his worker down below here again. And he made big advances, but the question is, will he come out somewhere? And the only thing I see him doing, to be honest, is trying to dig his way across here and destroy the block below the Sentinels. But, uh, yeah, not really sure if this is so worth it, because he spent a lot of time with this guy just digging the mountain. Okay, so now, Krikov going for the Conquering Ward, which has just been put down. That's nasty. It wasn't even down for 5 seconds. But it's down again. And now Karatel shooting in his base. What is Krukov doing here? Is he going to destroy? Yes, Krukov is on the all order out offensive. Trying to destroy everything in his opponent's base. He didn't get the, the stone block. So the conquering ward stays up. And even over here. There is still one worker making sure that. Uh, well, he tried to stop it. But yeah, no. Karatel now over here. Having a slight disadvantage, I'm gonna be honest. Because he still has this blob of Halbideas, but now... I'm still confused by this worker. But yeah, the thing is, he only has one archer over here, so what is this archer going to help his blob of Halbideas following the other blob of Halbideas? Will actually one of them be able to go down? That does not seem like it. Okay, but they are pursuing everyone here. Over the middle of the map. Okay, five minutes left in regulation. 
there we go. And in eight seconds, I'm going to write the message because that's going to be it. But yeah, so far, no clear advantage. I think that so far, Caratel is winning simply because he has this one crystal for sure. And his opponent didn't yet build another conquering ward. Can he even build another conquering ward? I don't think he has the resources. He doesn't. He does have the iron ingots, but he doesn't have the brimstone. And as long as he doesn't get some brimstone, he's not going to be able to build another conquering ward. So I think, yeah, there we see the, the worker go get some brimstone. Or does he? Well, he seems to be going somewhere. But on the other side... Okay, we're just going to check in on the underground worker here. Okay, so he built an incredible tunnel system with many traps, so to say. So just if you go down there, you can go back up, so you will have to micromanage it. But the question is, will it have been worth it? Because just check out the time. This is shit to become claustrophobic, by the way. Imagine you're in here. <laughs> but yeah, um, he keeps on working and... As he's going right now, I think he will be coming out under the crystal. The thing is, even if he comes out under the crystal, what will you be doing? You have three minutes left and there's even <laughs> soil spilling out over ground. So if he didn't see him coming, he will have the queue now. Uh, but yeah, he's getting way closer than he was before. And there's no one left in the base, but there are only th three minutes left. And I don't think in three minutes you can travel this the whole distance. Okay, so Kriukov now, all his people in his base, all his people with weapons. What is Karatel doing? Karatel having one explosive barrel. Okay, so this was the plan, not the alchemist, the explosive barrel. Very interesting. And now he's having seven, eight, eight halberdiers coming in there. So they are going to frighten everything and everyone. The question is, will the explosive barrel be used to destroy like the sentinels over here by the way one of your guys is losing health or will he be trying to blow everything up actually yeah he's just putting it down and he's going to try to destroy it actually and he ordered all of his people away okay yeah this is dangerous because now there's a tnt box basically there and actually we can see here the worker is running back so he doesn't seem to be going anywhere quick update on this one so as it is right now Caratel will be winning in two minutes time Caratel is in the winning position he will be winning by having the most conquering wards because there is no capturing ward here and one of your halberdiers is dying son so you might be doing something okay so Krukov is trying to put his uh, TNT barrel back but now they're all coming for it so if they are closed you can just literally exploded but where's the worker did the worker die it seems like it there's the there are the rest of the worker this is this is dark but okay so one minute and 40 seconds left right now and this guy oh this guy character leaving one guy in there just to be sure but yeah i'm just going to Check out this. I received a message. Okay, no, that's my bad. I'm just gonna have to mute. Alright, so now. They are destroying the TNT box. It's going to explode. Carrot Hill, move your guy. He's going to... Oof, and he's dead. One of the Albadiers of Carrot Hill died. The thing is now there are only six left and now there are six halberdiers coming in to charge but only 50 seconds left on the timer which means that if Caratel doesn't lose everything of his, every one of his guys which i doubt he will he will be winning this first this first match Okay, but now Karatel just going on the offensive saying, okay, you know what, I'm going to kill your guy here. I think he's trying to get all of his opponents out of there. And now Karatel running back. And another one who just took the place. Running back with all of his halberdiers. 
And yeah, this guy over here even didn't do anything in the end, so a bit sad, but uh, you know. And now over here, Caratel is a fight. But, yeah, running back and time. And GG for the first map. Caratel wins by having more conquered crystals. Ironically, one conquered crystal against zero. 